Hi, I'm Ben Reeves, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'll be starting a new series called Better Than a Hackintosh, and I'm going to prove that you can make anything better than a Mac or a Hackintosh by using a Dell Mini 9 from 2008. I know you think that, you know, it's 2021, how in the world is this going to be possible? Well, let's get into it. So, here's the Dell Mini 9, and I know that looks like Snow Leopard, because it is. And no, I didn't turn this into a Hackintosh. This is just a screenshot of what some people were doing back in 2008 on their Dell Mini 9s. And honestly, this wasn't a particularly good experience, and I doubt it looked anything like this because you only had 1024 by 768 screen resolution. Um, so I imagine there was a lot of things that you probably just weren't able to click on and do while running Mac OS little on Windows or Linux, just about everything suffered from the limited screen real estate. So I know what everyone's wanting to know. Okay, so what does it actually look like on Linux? Well, this here is MX Linux 19.4, and this installs totally fine on the limited storage capacity of eight gigabytes of SSD storage. Uh, an SSD back then was a pretty big deal. This is one of the earliest laptops uh, out there on the market that people were buying in large quantities with an SSD, however limited, because it was super cheap. Then you also had one gigabyte of RAM that came stock. Of course, you could max it out at two gigabytes, I believe, which I have done. I've gone ahead and ordered that off eBay because I don't like torturing myself. Um, so I am running this with two gigabytes of RAM. Um, so let's take a look though at what it actually looks like because that's the default that I don't really care for. Even though it makes sense for this limited screen resolution to have your bar over on the left side, uh, I prefer something a little more usable. And so this is what it looks like. So you have your plank task tray down there, which is really simple and easy to install. Then I also installed the Vala panel menu and I made slight modifications. Uh, when you go into the panel here, uh, you can go under Panel Preferences, and if you've installed the Vala app menu uh, via the terminal, uh, you should see that available and you can add it. Uh, there's also the notification area. Um, due to your limited um, space, see I don't actually want to remove that, what I want to do is go into Preferences here. Uh, you can hide everything that would normal, normally appear in your top tray there, and by doing that, it gives you a lot more screen real estate. If you don't do that, applications like Sublime Text will really suffer because uh, it goes really far out with the global menus. Um, normally, uh, you could end up seeing it get cut off right here on Project uh, when this is fully expanded. Let me see if it does that. Yeah. When I fully expand it, it doesn't quite got to project, but it does get rid of some things. So minifying that definitely helps. And then too, I, I think even if you have a lot of screen real estate, you may just want to hide everything anyways, because it looks a lot nicer doing it that way. Uh, which of course, the other thing that you're probably asking is like, well, with this being a Dell Mini 9, what does the keyboard look like? Is it even usable? So let's take a look at that. So this is what the Dell Mini 9 keyboard actually looks like. So you have your uh, touchpad right here, and you do have to be mindful of the fact that your scrolling happens right here. You don't do two-finger scroll on this pad. You definitely only want to use the sides. Um, and as long as you're aware of that, it's not too big of a deal. When I first pulled this out of storage, I was really wondering what was going on with the trackpad because I didn't realize that uh, the scrolling was happening simply from that. Um, when my hands are on it, the actual letter keys are fairly decent. Um, let's see, get on the F key there. Because um, you do have pretty full keys on the letter keys. Now, other areas, uh, you can definitely see that the keys are condensed. Um, and with my Kinto application, of course, my primary hotkey is the Alt key where the Command key would be. So I can use that and have the Mac-like experience that I prefer to have on my laptops. Uh, so that's honestly pretty nice um, overall. Let me uh, switch over to another view here. Um, so let me reactivate the laptop screen. So there we go. And I will also reactivate my camera here, or at least I'll attempt to. 
there we go so now you can actually watch as i uh, type something out so if i type in testing testing or just a bunch of junk let's say okay so i can hold down the alt and a key and you can see that everything's getting highlighted i can also uh, move my cursor around the way that you would expect so if i hold down the key that would normally be alt which in here is the windows key but if i hold down what would normally be alt on a mac you can see that my cursor is traversing the way that you would expect it to um, another thing that you can do if you have a lot of um, words in your document that repeat uh, each other um, so if you have the word test in here multiple times, Sublime has a really neat uh, select all feature uh, that you can actually make use of uh, on here. Let's see, so if I hold down uh, what's normally control command G, it highlights all of those. So now I've got multiple cursors and I can replace uh, testing with dog or whatever type of word that, that I want to replace it with. So that's definitely extremely helpful for programming. Um, and I am a programmer, so uh, that's the main reason why I wrote uh, Kinto is so that if I jump on a Linux computer or even a Windows computer, I get to carry over all of my hotkeys from Mac OS. I'm trying to think if there's anything else for me to really show off when it comes to this uh, Dell Mini 9. Um, but I really haven't made that many modifications besides the Plank and adding the Vala app menu. I mean, those were really the only two uh, modifications I've made. I made a few more modifications so that I could do this very unique screen capture that you see. Um, that honestly probably took me more time than uh, installing MX Linux 19.4 and putting Kinto on there. Um, well, I did make a minor rewrite of uh, Kinto as well. Uh, previously, Kinto would only work on system D operating systems, and now it supports the older sys uh, v init operating systems, although by the time I finished uh, writing that update, um, someone told me that uh, I could go into MX Linux and enable systemd right as I finished writing the the addition for sysv init. So, and that took me a few days actually of working on and off. Um, so yeah, uh, I wish I would have known that earlier. I might not have made this update. However, uh, for any uh, Linux users out there that uh, don't like systemd for whatever reason, I guess now you have one more application that is compatible with your, um, with your Linux operating system. So whether it's old or a fork of an existing modern one. And this is a pretty modern version of Linux. Uh, this MX Linux 19.4 uh, is using the 4.19 kernel. Uh, it's a long-term support kernel. Um, and so it has all the security updates that you would want. Um, oh, there is another thing that I should probably show because um, due to the limited screen resolution, one of the problems that you might run into is let's say you want to open up the screensaver app or something and make some changes to your screensaver. One thing that you'll notice really quickly is that uh, you don't have any buttons at the bottom, so you can't really um, save what you're working on or preview it because you just can't interact with it. So one of the things that you can do to help resolve that is if you jump over into the terminal, there is an application called xrandr, and with xrandr you can actually um, set the scaling uh, up by uh, using this right here. Uh, so it's xrandr dash dash output. Um, the LVDS1 is the screen name for the local laptop itself. Um, then the VGA1 is for my screen capture. Uh, but after that, there's the scale parameter, and then you've got 1.2 times 1.2. So essentially what you're saying is you want to increase everything by 20%. And once you do that, uh, you're actually able to then interact with uh, this window here and you can preview a screensaver or do whatever it is that you want to do. So that is one of my recommendations, even though everything will obviously be native and sharper if you don't scale it by 20%, um, this still makes it more usable, uh, especially when you're going through various menus. Another thing that you can look at as well, if you're curious to know 
what exactly that resolution is with that uh, 20% increase. You can actually pull this up and you can scroll up and you can see that your virtual resolution is now uh, 1229 by 720. So roughly, so it gets you pretty close to that 1336 uh, by 768. Uh, if you really wanted to keep messing with it, you could you could get that virtual resolution, but of course it's not going to be any sharper. So I pretty well just recommend increasing it by 20% and you're good after that. Um, if you like this video and like to see more of these type of reviews, uh, just let me know. Uh, hit like and subscribe and download Kento and let me know what you think. All right.